Now that we've talked about Java happens before relationships in general, I'd like to give you some concrete examples to make the ideas more specific. First, we're going to talk about how Java thread methods support happens before relationships. And then we'll talk about how Java collections support happens before relationships. Let's start by talking about threads first. There's a number of examples of happens before relationships in the Java thread methods. For example, starting a thread happens before the run hook method of the new thread is called. So as you can see here, we have thread A, which is going to go ahead and create a new thread and start it. And that creation needs to finish before the run method on the newly created thread begins to execute. Let's take a look at a little bit of code to make this more clear. So here we have thread T1. We're going to go ahead and create a new thread and start that new thread for thread T1. And we're going to give it a lambda expression, which will play the role of the run hook method in our example. So that'll go ahead and run in the background. And the key thing to note here is that the state of thread T1 must be consistent and visible so before run actually begins to execute in the background. Obviously, if the thread was not finished being initialized and was not made visible, then we'd be in great danger if we tried to call the run method to start. Let's talk about the reverse of starting a thread. Let's talk about what happens when a thread terminates. So the way it works is that the termination of a thread must happen before and finish before a join with the terminated thread is allowed to complete. So in this example, again, thread A is going to join with thread B and finishing running the method, the run method of thread B has to happen before the next statement after the join. Let's take a look at the example here. You can see that we go ahead and have a new thread, thread T1. This is the same as before. And let's assume that it goes ahead and prints hello world. And after it is done running the lambda expression, which isn't very long in this case, of course, that thread will terminate. At this point, the thread waiting on join will only resume its processing after thread T1 is actually done. And any state that's in the thread is properly flushed out so that, th that the waiting thread will get access to anything that's changed as a result. Let's talk about some of the happens before relationships that are supported by Java collections. So various methods in the Java util concurrent package classes also establish happen before relationships. And uh, you may recall that we've, we've talked about some of these things before. We've talked about things like concurrent, concurrent hash maps and so on. We've also talked about other mechanisms such as monitor locks and uh, Java arrangement locks and so on. And the thing to remember is that an unlock on a monitor lock happens before every subsequent acquisition on the same lock. So you can see here we have two threads, thread A and thread B. And here I'm using synchronized statements, but the same thing would true, be true with synchronized methods or arrangement locks and so on. And so if you release the lock in thread A, then that has to happen before thread B is able to acquire the lock. Let's take a look at an example. If you think about our array blocking queue that we used as the case study for the Java Rantrant Lock and Java Condition Object videos and lessons, you'll see that we had examples where we had put and take methods. And the rule here is that for put, we need to finish doing all the work there and then unlock the lock. And that will then ensure that the data is properly synchronized so that when we take, try to take something from the array blocking queue, that that lock will only be able to acquire the method after the other unlock is finished and the information is pushed out to the caches. Uh, likewise, for various collections, such as concurrent hash maps, actions in a thread prior to placing an object into a concurrent collection must happen before the actions subsequent to the access or the removal of that element from the collection in another thread. So here we've got an example where we've got ourselves a concurrent hash map. In thread one goes ahead and say creates the hash map. It goes ahead and puts some elements into it. And then thread two, which would obviously have to have access to that same hash map, will then go ahead and get the 
key get the value associated with that key. And the key point here is that placing a key value pair into the concurrent hash map must happen before the access or removal, in this case the access, of that pair or that key from the map. So what this is really saying is you don't end up with inconsistent state where maybe the key goes into the map, but the value hasn't quite got in there yet, and then someone else tries to access it. So that's another example of a happens before guarantee that's provided by the methods in Java Util concurrent packages. So as it turns out, with a lot of this stuff, Java class libraries, such as concurrent hash map or even thread for that matter, are responsible for ensuring that all these happen before relationships are enforced properly. Now, the good news is you don't actually have to understand all the nitty-gritty details of Java's memory model to make this work. You just have to understand how to use various Java synchronizers properly. So I'm just providing you with a little conceptual understanding of what those synchronizers are doing underneath the hood. So that wraps up our discussion about happens before relationships.